Now let us move on to the functions of platelet. In the beginning I told you the platelets are having a very significant role in hemostasis. That means arrest of bleeding from the vessels. Now let us study the functions of platelets under these three different headings. Platelet adhesion, platelet activation, platelet release reaction and aggregation. So these are the important headings one should know regarding the functions of platelets. Now let us take one by one. What do you mean by platelet adhesion? Now you see the video here. You can see the moving platelets in the bloodstream when they come in contact with the subendothelial collagen that is the collagen fibers which are underneath the endothelial cells. Normally this collagen is not coming in contact with the blood. Why? Because you have a continuous layer of endothelium. By any chance if endothelial cells are getting disrupted or there is a discontinuity of the endothelial cells, this flowing platelet as you see there in the video will come in contact with collagen. Because of certain specific receptors as I we discussed in the structure, the platelets will come in contact with this collagen. The platelet will get adhered to this collagen. Need to have a specific type of protein bridging the gap that protein is called von Willebrand factor which is produced from the endothelial cells and it is an integral part of your factor 8 in the coagulation system. Now after this adhesion of platelet as you see the platelets changes its shape or they are getting activated. You can see there in the video the platelets are sending like pseudopodia like structures outwards. The cytoplasm is flowing or it makes bulges on the membrane. The structure change it is mainly contributed by the cytoskeleton or the contractile protein which are seen under the plasma membrane. Because of that the platelet changes its shape. This is a process of activation of platelets. Now what is the change afterwards you can see the stored substances in the granules they get released. When we discussed the diagram or the structure we said that the platelets are traversed by lot of canalicular system in the cytoplasm. What is the function of this canalicular system? The granules will come and fuse with the canaliculae release their content and through the canaliculae the substances are released out. In the video you can see lot of chemicals are coming out from the platelets and what are their functions? Some of them are vasoconstrictors like thromboxane A2 and 5-hydroxytryptamine. Some of the substances will attract more and more platelets to that area like ADP, platelet derived growth factors. Thereby more platelets will come and get gathered around that particular injury. This process is called platelet aggregation. In the video one can easily see or differentiate these different phases. First you are seeing adhesion, then you are seeing activation and release of the content and these contents are attracting more and more platelets and resulting in aggregation. What happens afterwards? These aggregated platelets are very fragile, very loose and lack strengthy enough to arrest the bleeding. Later they are deposited by the fibrin threads and forming a loose platelet plug. There is some chemical reaction taking place during platelet activation. Number one, phospholipase C and phospholipase A2 and the third enzyme which is cyclooxygenase. The phospholipase A2 will act on certain specific fatty acids on the membrane and that is cleaved into lot of intermediates and finally you are getting two important compounds. Number one is thromboxane A2 on one side, on the other side you are getting prostacycline. They are actually having a very contrast 
mode of action. Thromboxane A2 will attract more platelets and they are vasoconstrictors. Whereas on the other side, the process cyclin, they are vasodilators and they inhibit the platelet aggregation. They are counteracting each other. So once we inhibit the cyclooxygenase by low dose of aspirin, which is a drug we are usually prescribing for thinning the blood or preventing the clot, especially those patients who are recovering from the stroke as well as recovering from myocardial infarction, this aspirin is well prescribed. This aspirin by inhibiting cyclooxygenase inhibit the platelet aggregation. That is the reason why aspirin are otherwise called anti-platelet drug. There is a very common saying, is it not? One aspirin every day keeps the cardiologist away, is it not? So this is by the inhibition of cyclooxygenase where the thromboxane A2 synthesis is totally inhibited and favoring the production of prostacycline. They are vasodilators and inhibit the platelet aggregation. Thereby, such patients are benefited by this low-dose aspirin.